a bunch of tips over the last few months, uh, just having to scrum from home ourselves and why not share it with all of you today. All right, so we'll get started. Um, I'm Jessica Crowley, by the way. Yes, and I'm Denise Jarvie. Very excited to be here. So our first tip for you is establish a routine. Um, because when we went home, it was very surprising to us just how much more we had to balance um, as women, as leaders, um, and also as mothers. Uh, the, the chaos of life as well as the complexities of the types of work that we're doing. Um, so establishing a routine is our first tip from us to you on what we think you should do if you're going to scrum from home and be successful. So here's a little snip of my calendar. This is a week in my life. It looks really simple, um, but I'll explain to you a little bit about the complexities and how um, us ladies manage the uh, balance between our professional and our personal lives. First of all, I own a company called Apically Agile LLC. I do consulting for a lot of different places and a lot of different consulting companies as well as direct clients. And um, Yes, and my company is North Country Project Management, um, and I also do a lot of work for many different organizations across the U.S. Normally, I'm traveling all the time, um, so I've really had quite the transition to working from home, but we both do a lot of freelance work. We work together often with some clients, and our calendars are very full. So one thing we found, if you have a lot of outside um, asks being given to you, like, hey, can I throw a 30 minute meeting and it's outside mm -hmm. of your company, then having an app like Calendly that's linked up to all of your personal and professional calendars can be a great way to give someone a slot of time. And I've done it on what's okay for me from 15 minute increments to, to an hour. And that gives me the freedom to set my working hours. And we're gonna talk a lot about time boxing. So if you are gonna establish a cadence, time boxing is an important essential best practice for scrumming from home. So that's our avenue for handling asks outside of our current um, existing clients and our current contracts. So Jessica and I created Radically Better Agile together. Um, it's a company that does Agile and Scrum specifically with uh, government clients. And so we created Radically Better Agile together and some of our clients uh, ask us for time and we have found that by using tools like Calendly, we're able to block off and time box the time that we know that we're going to dedicate um, to Radically Better Agile. Given that we both have many other things going on, this has really worked for us. So we have a scrum team together um, where we manage all of our flow of work and that's always dedicated to the afternoon. So one thing you can do if you have multiple programs you support, multiple contracts you support, or maybe you're on multiple scrum teams is try to limit your contact switching by having time boxes that are set um, either one specific day you focus on one thing or you split your day in half. We, Anything less than an hour is actually really difficult to time box. So we recommend that you do it in two to three hour chunks, just from our experience. Um, so that's one example. And I'm actually on a completely different scrum team for another contracting company. It's called Agile and Nonprofits. And um, that company, I do my scrum meetings and events in the morning, always everything before lunchtime. That allows me to have balance for things like my personal commitments. On the far left, I'll zoom in a little bit here, you can see um, my, my children. I have three kids um, and Denise is, and I have two, yes, Aurora and Tristan there on the right. Yes. So I like this approach because I know that I can count on Jessica in the afternoon. We can um, do our scrum events in the afternoon and I know that I have time in the morning for my other work. So it works out really well. So if you aren't already doing this, then I do highly recommend you find some way to map out your commitments so you can start to prioritize them and make sure that you're still doing the things that, that make your life well balanced and so that you can be happy and productive. Um, and one way that we find to do that, to do that outside of our um, calendars is by making our work visible. So it's strange when you go from working you know, right next to somebody, um, cubicle to cubicle, and then you're remote, there's this communication barrier that happens and um, it's important to still be able to communicate like where mm -hmm. are you with the work that you've said you're going to work on and Kanban boards have been our life saving. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it just has been amazing. So with one of my teams, the scrum team I meet with in the morning, Agile and Nonprofits, we have a mural board and I will say this is really simplistic. I don't know if you've ever used a mural board before, but I'll kind of 
zoom in. If you've not seen a Kanban board, what it basically is, is each column is the phase of your work and you're flowing work through the phases of your work from to do to in progress when you're actually touching it and working on it. Um, and then to sometimes review for our team, it's review our product owner, Diane reviews it, and then we move it to done. So this Kanban board, it doesn't give you any reporting options, but this team is very flexible and fluid and it works for us. So this is the board that we live and breathe in. Also, we do all of our like events in there our scrum events. Um, so it's like a one-stop place we can go in and collaborate. And many of us can be in there at the same time. So you'll see like this little red dot here. This is actually someone commenting on a story I created and telling us where they're at with it. So that's helpful. Um, so I highly recommend that tool if you don't need a lot of reporting. It feels like you're in front of the whiteboard, right? Like really I could does. be in there and Jessica could as well. And you can tell where we're at and it feels like you're standing in front of a whiteboard, which is really one of the best ways to communicate. Yes. If you've ever seen that um, graph about the richness of communication, it goes from the weakest form of communication being, um, you know, emails or things that don't actually get writing to a your, paper, writing a paper, yeah. documents, mm -hmm. all the way up to two people standing in front of a whiteboard. And that's because mm -hmm. if Denise and I were standing there, she could draw her perspective and I could truly start to see what it is. And then I could layer on my thoughts and we could come to an agreement together. And Miro simulates that. Mm -hmm. So it's an amazing tool. And it, I have to say it's simplistic. It too. is, it's easy. <laughs> Um, okay. All right. And then JIRA. So that's another tool that I rely on quite heavily, especially in the government sector, because um, I need a lot of reporting capability. I work on huge programs. The scrum teams that I'm working on there are not just one scrum team, but it's many scrum teams. And I need to be able to um, not only have that Kanban and that flow for our states of work, but I also need to be able to extract the data so that I can get metrics and do reporting to the government. Um, so I use both. I like Miro as well. Um, but if you need a more, um, you know, rigor or more metrics, more reporting, then something like JIRA would be a good choice. And then this is actually uh, our uh, physical board, our physical Kanban board. Um, I still like to have a board there. Um, I still like to move the stickies across. Sometimes we'll use video. Sometimes I'll mirror what's on my physical board in JIRA or in Miro. Um, there's just something to actually moving those stickies across the board, that physical reminder that's right there by my desk. So we use a mix of tools, Miro, JIRA, physical boards, um, and also Mural, which we'll show you later. And if you're like me, if you have a little mini black notebook or something and you're constantly doing to-do lists and you're checking things off. I'm an achiever, an Enneagram um, three. So I'm constantly <laughs> like checking things off on my to-do list. A Kanban board and sticking those stickies up and moving them across just like lets me release some of that mental tension that I carry trying to keep myself on top of all She rips the things. stickies up when she's done good. and she loves it. Yeah. I love it. So if you're that, if you have that going on, then please by all means do a physical board. The other thing is we definitely encountered some difficulties working remotely and having trying to scrum with uh, other individuals. And that led us to really have to put into play working agreements that we're all bought into mm -hmm. and also identify norms. Yeah. So early on, and you can see this wonderful pose on Frozen, and it's not great <laughs> I'll try to recreate it for you. Uh, one of the biggest things we discovered is we can't have meaningful collaboration without video. Like that's, we just can't mm -hmm. go anywhere without video. Um, so uh, the face-to-face -face thing is super important. It, mm -hmm. It's led us to have to use many different kinds of platforms. And we'll explain to you what those are and recommend mm -hmm. some to you today. Um, mm -hmm. But very, me as many times as you get a chance to be, face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. that's what agility is all about. So try to do that with video. Um, and for us, we also use other tools as well. So I'm not sure if you guys have tried out Slack, uh, <laughs> but it is another tool that we think is very good. Um, we use that to collaborate and communicate with many of our colleagues um, and our teammates on our Scrum teams. Okay. Someone says rally. Yep, yes, rally is another rally. good tool. There are so many out there and um, we've tried several. These are just some of our favorites, but you're right. Rally is another good option. So if you don't know what Scrum is, here's your chance. Um, we, we did include the Scrum framework because one of the things we had to set working agreements on, believe it or not, was just people even showing up to the Scrum events and coming to an agreement on when it's acceptable. Yeah. When does it work for everyone? That was a really tough thing for us, especially since we have so many diverse um, team members. We have people that are mothers. We have people that are, um, you know, in situations where they have, you know, elderly parents and a lot of complex players. Um, 
And so it's not a one size fits all when you can meet how it works. And even on my scrum team um, with Radically Better Agile, it's much more flexible than my other team where it's very rigid and we meet the same time every, every day. Um, so the events, in case you wanted to know, um, I want you to remember three, five, three. And I'll explain to you what that is. If you don't know what Scrum is, it's a framework for approaching work that allows you to be adaptive and it includes working together as a team to solve complex problems. Um, so it's a way of doing work. It's a way of being agile and becoming agile. There's three roles. So I said the three, five, three. It's, there's the product owner um, who defines the what and prioritizes the backlog. There's the Scrum master who coaches the team and helps ensure that they're doing good scrum. They're looking for efficiency in the execution of good work. There's a development team, which is the most important. Denise and I always say, always say that. Yeah. They're the ones doing the work and developing the product. Um, and they're the ones deciding how to do the work. Um, so these three roles, that's it. That's all there is in scrum. There's nothing else. There's just those three roles. Um, and they work together to um, go through five events. And it's a rinse and repeat thing. So your first thing you should know is that a sprint is a time box. It can be anywhere from one to four weeks. And it's just a time where you've agreed to do a certain amount of work and your team is working to creatively uh, do that work to the best of their ability and show demonstrating or demonstrating to the customer some working product and getting feedback from them. So to do that, you have a kickoff meeting called sprint planning. And we love sprint planning because that's where you have an achievable goal the team commits to and you pull just enough stories in to meet your available capacity. You commit to those things and you start doing work and you collaborate as many times as possible to swarm and get that work done. You have a daily standup and we do our daily standup. We love it. Mm -hmm. So you get together. It's a maximum of 15 minutes and you say, here's what I did since we last met to accomplish the sprint goal. Here's what I'm going to do before we meet again. Here's something that's slowing me down. Here's how I could get faster. You do that every day, and this is pushing a couple of things. First of all, it's, it's causing rich communication and conversation. Second of all, it's removing impediments. And third of all, it's giving you a touch point to see real progress over time. And when you're doing this remotely, we find that doing that on video actually helps us convey where we're at and identify mm -hmm. when things maybe we couldn't do that as well um, through other mediums. And also using the tools. I mean, we're actually looking at the yes. Kanban board at this time. So, you know, if you're using Miro or Jira, and we'll have our video up, and then we're also looking at the Kanban board so we can talk about specific stories that we're working on. And then the sprint review. So if you've never been to a sprint review, this is the best and my most favorite meeting. The demo. <laughs> it's where you take this, the working product or the solution or service that you have and you show it for the sole purpose of getting feedback. So you can incorporate that feedback by either adding things to the items of work that you have or by um, incorporating that feedback and improving the process by which you do work. So after you solicit all that feedback, now you go into a closed door meeting and that's right here. That's this retrospective. The goal of the retrospective is getting better. Mm -hmm. It's about a Kaizen. A Kaizen is a, an improvement. One, one thing that the team agrees is either going to make them faster or make them happier. And their goal with that is so that they are, every sprint are doing this thing at the top of the priority list that makes them a better team and more cohesive. So that retrospective ends and voila, that's the end of the sprint. And hopefully you have three artifacts. If someone asks you, are you doing Scrum? Hopefully you have these three things. <laughs> um, one should be a product backlog. That's just a list of all of the things you have to get done. It's composed of uh, really detailed things at the highest level. And as you move out in time, it's big chunks of work that need to be decomposed. Yeah. So you have everything you need to do, which is a dream for me. I like that as an achiever. I want to see all the work I've got going on. I want to prioritize it. And then the team commits to some subset of that, some small piece of ready work, and they pull that into their backlog. So that's two of the three artifacts. And the last artifact, the, the thing that Denise and I can tell if you're doing Scrum or not, yes. is, is there a working product increment? So if you do not have something working that's an aggregate of the sprints prior to it, then we know something is actually broken in the way that you're doing Scrum. 
So the takeaway I think on this one though is that um, our working agreements and norms is that we actually do all of these events. We make sure that we attend each of the, these events. Oh crap. Okay, and then we want to create a work environment. So this is me in my office where I would normally be and I have been for the last three months. Um, this is what my work setup looks like. I I had to rearrange my entire office. I don't know about you, but when I started working from home, too. it just, the environment didn't work for me. So completely revamp it if you need to. That doesn't mean you need to purchase new equipment. It can mean just, I switched where my desk was. I changed the lighting. I opened, I got rid of the curtains. I made it so that the things that motivate me are right up in the forefront. Mm -hmm. And I also picked some things like, don't be afraid to order some things on Amazon like that inspire you, like this mermaid or or the do what you love or anything is possible um, because you're going to scrum better when you're in an environment that lets you focus and inspires you to be creative and innovative, especially since you're not interacting the same way you would with people that inspire you. I definitely had to do the same thing. I had a smaller space, but I put some things in it that I love. Like I'm a gardener. I'm a, I love plants. So I have some plants that I love and can, you know, tend to, and I have pictures of my family on the wall that I can see. Um, so I agree. I think making the space where you're going to spend so much time, you know, in somewhere where you want to be is incredibly important. Um, so this is my setup, a couple of, uh, I have a couple of monitors. Um, yep, so we did both buy a couple of things to help us um, have a better space and we can show you some of these things here. Uh, so I think the one of the most interesting things on this slide actually is the markers and the paper and the sticky notes because what we found is that um, drawing and sharing things that you've actually created and holding them up for your team, um, if you're especially like brainstorming or coming up with new ideas, um, is really a good way to uh, communicate. And then just some techie things that we got. Um, we both bought new webcams. Actually, I bought mine and she said, whoa, that made a huge difference. This so is incredible, by the she way. She bought the same webcam. We can share it with you if you guys are interested. Um, of course, sticky notes, every good scrum team has lots of sticky notes. I showed you my physical Kanban board and we got the headset because we had a couple of times where audio was weird. Um, so yeah, we just spruced up our place, made sure we had a good internet connection and the tools that we needed to be successful. Made sure we had coffee too. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know we are actually starting to run over. Is it okay if we finish the slides or should we? Are we That's okay. If, if it's a few minutes, we would appreciate attendees to stay on if they can. Sure. Okay. Uh, so this one is minimize distraction. Like that's a huge thing for me from, from the difference in um, working in an office and working at my house. I really had to kind of understand what my triggers were. I put this weapons of mass distraction because I feel like I'm, I'm at my house and it's easy to just do LinkedIn or whatever. So um, I really think about the prioritization. I figure out what the time is of time of day and how I work that uh, best. And I also tell my kids and my family that that, hey, if the door is shut to my office, it really means I need to focus and don't, you know, don't disturb me. And if it's open, I'm doing something where it's not, you know, I don't need to focus as much and it might be okay. We also, like many of you, this when the schools closed, we were, we were homeschooling and we were mm -hmm. also working and scrumming <laughs> from home. So we learned a lot of these techniques. Um, another thing we would recommend is make work visible. And these are our best collaboration tools that we can yes. recommend to you. Miro. It's very similar to Miro, um, but it is a great tool. I actually really like Miro and it's also less expensive if you're going to have, uh, like if you have guests that want to see your boards or something like that. So we use both. We use Miro that she showed earlier and also Miro, right. but they're similar. I think Miro has more options and templates probably. Yes, but we had guests come to our demo and we had to pay for day passes in Miro. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind that there is some costs associated with that and it did surprise us. Yeah, we it were did. surprised. <laughs> um, Jira, I mentioned earlier, the only thing to note here is that you can get a lot of add-ons for Jira. Easy BI is one of our favorites if you really need to aggregate data and you have a lot of teams that you're looking at. Slack, can't get enough of Slack, especially since mm -hmm. I'm on so many different teams. I like Slack because it, it I can quickly see who's trying to communicate with me. And also it's, it's less formal than maybe sending an email or something. It's okay to make it just quick and crisp. Uh, Google Docs, can't get enough of that either because we collaborate yeah. a lot on the types of work that we're doing. There's a lot of, um, you know, writing and a lot of collaborating that happens. Confluence, we use Confluence as well. That's more where we're storing things like our norms, our working agreements, a lot of our do uh, documents there. So you can just quickly link on, oh, she just uploaded a file and here's the link. Um, okay, 
So then the, the next thing is, here's some of the things that we figured out for backlog refinement that we could do scrumming from home. Mm -hmm. um, one is without a roadmap, we actually felt kind of lost. So we were really used to a physical roadmap um, and without having a roadmap, it was kind of hard for us to inspire, uh, you know, our team for where we're going. Like, where are we going and why does this sprint have something to do with the bigger picture? Why is it important? So if you don't have a product roadmap yet electronically, I highly recommend that you do something. Yes. It doesn't have to be this complicated. You can do it in any tool like Mural, Mural. Those are all great tools. Jira actually has some add-ons that will help you do a roadmap. And it just lets your team know um, what the milestones are and how the releases or chunks of work relate to those milestones. User story mapping. We use this all the time. We can't even live without user story mapping. So if you haven't heard of it or haven't tried it out, um, definitely recommend it. We've got a book here um, that is the best book that we've read um, that really demonstrates how to do user story mapping. Um, it's a great tool for brainstorming and figuring out uh, where you're going. It's really strange yeah. when you're doing this remote and you're all of a sudden you're trying to collaborate on taking a big chunk of work and decomposing it because normally there'd be a lot of conversation you'd be sitting around the table you'd make stories together and we found that story mapping when it's facilitated well um, helps the team take something big from the product backlog mm -hmm. and break it down and make sure we're not forgetting something we're all on the same page um, and yes Denise and I every time we get a chance we recommend this book because that's how we learned how to story map right. um, and it's, it's been very meaningful the also, planning poker app. Yeah, the planning poker app. Of course, you know, we're used to doing planning poker with the cards when we were with our teams. But since we're remote now, there's many different planning poker apps. But this is the one that we use. Um, we recommend it. Um, it's just a way to do planning poker virtually. So. The reason we recommend it is because it crosses platforms. And yes. It averages for you. So if you're like me and don't want to sit there and try to figure out the average for seven different team members then the best way to handle it is just have an app that does it for you yeah. and it works with iphone and android which a lot of them don't so and then mm -hmm. um creating a state of flow so weinberg table of project switching waste we found that <laughs> the more things that denise and i do the less time we actually have to do those things and that's because of this effect so the weinberg table of project switching basically shows that if you take on working on more than one thing at a time you lose um, a piece of working time. Mm -hmm. And what we found is anything more than two things at a time results in too much inefficiency. So we want to, while we're working remotely, show our work and then agree to limit all the work we have in progress and stop starting things. Like we found ourselves starting and dragging mm -hmm. things because we weren't communicating. As yeah, much. you saw our calendar. It's pretty full <laughs> and it has so many different things. So Harley, if we can do one, on one and get that done, that works so much better. And so that's where we started focusing on one thing at a time. And we made it a priority mm -hmm. to flow things together, even if that meant that I had to stop working on what I'm working on so we could collaborate and drive things to done. That was a better way of working. And it actually made it so we got more done than when we had we did, all yeah. these things that we were working that's on. That's what we say, single piece flow, Jessica. Can you stop <laughs> multitasking, please? <laughs> yes. So another thing is video and screen share. So we can't live without it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. at the point where if you're gonna collaborate this many times, like hours and hours with someone, mm -hmm. you need something more than just a phone call. It gets really dry. We uh, love Zoom. It's one of the easiest we're on it tonight, but in my field, especially with Department of Defense and government, it's not allowed. So we've tried many others. Uh, we recommend go to training and of course, could, you know, answer questions later if you had anything about these specific ones. But Zoom is great if, you, if you're allowed to use it, so. And the other thing is file sharing. One of the biggest things that annoyed me, if you have VPN, or you're trying to download things and you're having a really hard time, if it's not something that's classified and it's something that can be shared in a more easy to access place, these are the things that make your working faster. So there's less waste trying to open files. I literally had one file take two hours to open through my VPN. So I recommend finding something much more efficient and your team members will thank you for it. And last but not least, um, you have to try to find balance. When you're scrumming from home, like I said, there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of responsibilities that we have as women. And so what we want to do is um, understand each other's boundaries. Yes. So you see an early bird and a night owl. I'm the early bird. She's the night owl. I know that the mornings are best for me. Um, so we try to understand each other and when is the best time for us to collaborate knowing those things. So I think that ties hand in hand with what Cindy was speaking about earlier. Yes. We have people mm -hmm. on our team that don't have kids. We have people that do have kids. And so they have different priorities and different things that they're trying to balance. So we're trying to pick events and times because timing is everything mm -hmm. um, to collaborate and hit a common ground. 
it's different for every scrum team. We also have uh, some team members that have elderly parents that have to you know, leave earlier so they can take care of them and pick them up. Um, everything, <laughs> this is us. We try not to, but <laughs> yeah. We have some people who have incredible commitments outside of our scrum team. So they, everything's a priority. So we have to be able to come to a common agreement on what our time boxes are and establish those so that we don't have those infuriating conversations with right. people. Uh, when they, you know, cross the boundary. That's why we make that work visible. And that's why we use the Kanban and some of the techniques so that we don't really end up with a situation like this where everything is a priority. And then education. Some people are pursuing uh, classes. Maybe they're becoming certified scrum masters, et cetera. So try to accommodate the fact that you have people who are pursuing goals outside of the scrum team. And also the difference in skill sets. Yeah. Um, that's something that's important for you to understand and, you know, to make sure that it's a balanced um, approach. Okay, so opting in, we found that checking in is super important because now it's the, everybody expects you to be on demand all yes. the time. And sometimes you just need to shut your camera off and disengage because you're not available and you can't focus anymore. And this is something that we feel builds psychological safety and really helps to ensure that you're getting, when you are here, you're present and you're on and you're paying attention. And yeah, so we understand if somebody turns their video off, it means they need to step away for a moment. They're not there uh, just for now. So we've accepted that as our norm. Yes. So last, take a coffee break, guys. We never take a coffee break. We, we have, from the difference between working in an office and working at home is you forget to stop working. And I will find myself uh, just still sitting in the same position and my, my watch will go off and say, you need to move. Um, so don't forget to take a coffee break. And at lunchtime, if you can, get outside, go take a walk, do whatever it is. I mean, it doesn't have to be a walk, but what are you passionate That's about? That's worked for us. We, I mean, I love to take just, a, even if it's just a quick walk, like down to my long mailbox, <laughs> down the long driveway to my mailbox with my dog. Even just that little break really has helped me come back, feel centered, feel, you know, you know more ready to work. It's a, just a way to make it more sustainable. Yes. And don't forget to look at what your actual capability and capacity is and don't overcommit yourself. As hard as that is, try not to. Say no. Focus, uh, focusing is about We're getting there. saying <laughs> no. So it's sometimes you have to draw that line and say no. So thank you so much, ladies. I do yes. apologize if we're outside of our time box, um, but thank you so much for letting us finish that. Yes. Thank, you. Okay. thank you, Denise. Thank you, Jessica. This is so relevant to us right now. And uh, this is great. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you guys are traveling, but it means a lot for our team. Any questions from the audience, please go ahead. I know we are running over, so we really apologize for that, but I hope you guys are finding this helpful. Yeah, no, this is nice. You guys did an excellent job, and I, I hope I can work with you in the future. Yes, yes. Connect with us on LinkedIn. Yes, please. Thank you. Bye, Ken. <laughs> Brenda, do you see any questions on the chat? Um, I'm looking through. I don't see anything right now. I see someone has incorporated walks a few times. Yes. That's good. Oh, yes. that's me. <laughs> yes. I just started doing it a couple weeks ago. Now the weather is finally, you know, decent and uh, it's made such a difference. I can't even tell you. Like I feel so much better in the afternoons and even I'm doing it mid morning too. And I do it at the end of the day after work and I've just, it's great. So Good advice. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us, guys. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I wrote down so many things that you recommended and applications and the planning poker, all of it. Yeah, so. that one, the planning poker app is really good. I know, it looks really yeah. fun. Yeah. So have you guys um, found any retro um, activities that have been you know, helpful? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. From a personal yeah, standpoint, we can show you. We can show you some of them that we like. Uh, can we? Let's see. Can we stop recording though? <laughs> Here. Yeah. yeah.